Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. Over the last three presidential election cycles, there is clear evidence voters are attracted to the message of non-interventionism and are very wary of foreign wars. This most certainly helped Trump in 2016. But his time in office is spotty at best. Now, Joe Biden appears to embrace the same foreign policies as Bush and Obama. I guess nothing really will fundamentally change. Crosstalking Forever Wars, I'm joined by my guests, Laura Fink in San Diego. She is the founder and CEO of Rebel Communications, as well as a Democratic strategist. And in New York, we cross to Lionel. He is a legal and media analyst. All right, Crosstalk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. Okay, let's go to San Diego. Uh, Laura, uh, Joe Biden, the uh, presidential candidate uh, for the Democrats, he had an interview with the uh, news outlets, uh, Stars and Stripes, and he made it very clear that he would continue the foreign wars in the Middle East. Troops, troops would remain there. He had, doesn't contemplate any kind of cut in defense spending. And at the same time, we have like the Eurasia Group Foundation, which is kind of in the, it's very centrist. Uh, and they have uh, research that the, overwhelmingly the public supports less militarization of foreign policy, a decrease in military spending, and uh, are on the side of ending these forever wars. Why is Joe sticking to the Bush-Obama agenda? Go ahead, Laura. Well, I think that it's because what the American people want is probably in line with what Joe Biden wants. No one wants to be in endless wars, uh, but engagement is sometimes necessary. And and right. no, everyone would love after to lower the defense years, budget. After 19 years, is it, is it still worth it? How? Well, look, I think, no, look, we can we can dispute, you know, different decisions made by different presidents. And I would say that there is a diversity of, of philosophy among the different presidents that you named. But I will say, if we're talking globally about engagement uh, versus isolationism, ultimately, this is about fomenting and trying to encourage peace in a very particular way in a very tricky way and I think that I think the challenge is and that that doesn't mean just in you know military engagement it means diplomatic engagement it means economic engagement it means figuring out how to balance the tools in our toolkit to try to create stability and peace around the world and ultimately that is in the American interest so I, I think that when we when we reduce these arguments into something about do or not do this isn't you know Yoda and Star Wars this is uh, this is a complicated uh, foreign policy you you know, discussion, and I think we have to take it case by case. But but go ahead, you can go ahead and make the blanket, uh, the blanket with statements. Respect, with all due respect, I think the American people are tired of it's complicated, okay? That's why we need leadership, and I don't think President Trump has done a very good job in this respect here. Let me go to Lionel here. Why is it the binary isolationism and interventionism? I, I hear that all the time. It's a false argument, Lionel. I'm still trying to get over the notion of fomenting peace, I love that notion of we're going to to we're going to enrage people. We're going to to increase the the torrent of the vortex for peace by 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 engaging our military to foment peace. We are forgetting the gravamen, if you will, the 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 essence of this issue, and that is simply this: What is our mission? Nobody is against military involvement, military protection, uh, defending our allies. But the idea that our being there does something magical to keep our enemies in line, we need to know why are we there. Look, I don't want to go deep state, police state, intel state, shadow government, ruling class, but this is the military industrial complex that has been a part of the American uh, political system, irrespective of party. That's what this is. This has nothing to do with peace. Nobody can explain what we're even doing in Afghanistan yet. If you ask people that had something remotely to do with 9-11, and that's it. There is nothing un-American by demanding that we have a clear and cogent and limpid uh, system of, of protocol and a message and a mission. That's it.
You know, Laura, it, it, it seems to me because we, we, you know, campaigning is campaigning. Promises are promises, okay? We're all political junkies here. But it, it seems to me that no matter what a candidate says, maybe with the exception of Tul Tulsi Gabbard, which the, de the Democrats uh, dismissed uh, quite quickly, um, and I feel uh, very unfairly, is it doesn't really matter what your political stripe is, the permanent state or what people call the deep state. They're just going to keep calling the shots because, you know, I'll give Trump credit for at least trying to get out of these quagmires, but the deep state or the permanent bureaucracy constantly blocks. Don't you think that's going to happen to Biden too? Go ahead. Well, I, I, I'm not going to disagree that the military industrial complex is powerful, but, but do I think that they are calling the shots ultimately? I think that's some tin hat conspiracy theory action. Uh, look, the, 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 the the global, the globe, the distribution of global power is something that no single president can ultimately change. But the U.S. has a responsibility as a leader to unite our allies and to try to ensure that we have, because ultimately peace helps us in, and, and it protects our American security. And, and, you know, you cannot let go of the military option entirely. I think that's naive. I think you have no to look, and I, I don't disagree no that mission-driven is important. No, Lionel didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay, again, well, this is... It's but, a false binary. It's called, and it's I don't want to engage on the false binary, but I'm, I'm just telling you what I'm hearing here when I say that, that, that there's this conspiracy that the military deep state is, is directing and calling the shots. I will say this. Uh, Donald Trump is making big moves, but the impact of those moves does not seem to be beneficial. Unilaterally removing troops from situations before ensuring that there is stability and a vacuum is not created ultimately doesn't do, uh, do us any good. It can, it can be a great talking point for the campaign trail, but will after this Afghanistan withdrawal and the deal cut with the Taliban, will we see uh, the Afghan government uh, have a more stable engagement? Will we see the people uh, livelihoods. Is it the U.S. is it the Americans' people's responsibility to maintain peace in Afghanistan? Why? What is? Why is the United States in Syria? Why? It's illegal under international law. It was not invited there. And then well, it let's says, talk about it. "I'm sorry, it's protecting its oil. It's not. It's not America's oil to protect." Okay, let's, I mean, let's you see my point here. No one likes to talk about these things. They're very inconvenient. You know, that we're a presence for, for peace. It, uh, no, it, may, it keeps the civil war going on. But, see, but Peter, you're arguing against it without a, 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 out, without advocating for a solution. So, I so you know, you're saying if you get just out, get everybody the out. Solution is very simple. If you get out, then the parties on the ground will have to figure it out. It's I think it's how you get out. Maintain no. Get get on the airplane it's and how you get out. <laughs> no, no, wow. no. This is ridiculous. See, this is an argument to but see, not but to see, resolve. There's... It's not to resolve and to kick the can out. But I know you want if to you get out, give equal time. See, go ahead, Mike. Well, first, I love whenever something is promoted that is true that has been spoken of since Eisenhower's valedictory, the military industrial complex. When you don't know what to say, with all due respect to, to our guest. So much respect coming my way here. So well, much respect. But, but, but with all due respect, you bring up this, this hackneyed trope about conspiracy theories. It's become the climate change. Whenever you don't know what to do, why are there fires? Climate change. Now, if you want to just... So you look, don't believe in climate change either, just to be clear. Oh, I believe in climate change. I believe in weather and the sun, but I do not believe in an anthropogenic causation model. <laughs> No, never. The Holocene, no, no, the Holocene Maxima, the Hipsy Thermals, anybody who really knows anything about this would argue. Anyway, aside from that, because we're not going to do Battle of the Bumper Stick. Oh, we already have a big problem here, Lionel. Don't make it, make it bigger. But, <laughs> but here's the thing. Look no further than NATO. Look no further than the Atlantic Council. Look no further than people trying to dredge up old Cold War Russophobic tropes. There is a machine that is going on. And the idea... And let's, let's, let's just go back to Afghanistan. What people have this, this, this they create this, this fantasy that by our being there, we're teaching villagers how to build, drill for wells or something. It just so happens that Afghanistan is the Saudi Arabia of lithium and every conceivable precious metal that you can imagine. It, the, a friend of mine one time said, what would have been the chances of our invading Iraq 
if their main export had been broccoli. We have to stop repeating these wonderful tropes and these truisms about how we're there defending the world and somehow maintaining peace. But here's a question you asked, Peter. If we were to leave, let's just take Syria. Let's just say we just said, all right, hands off Syria, figure it out. What would happen? How would our, how would our, the United States, how would our, or anybody else's national security be compromised? Just so happens there's a pipeline there. It's about gas. It's about getting straight to the Mediterranean. And for us to keep reminding us of these Frank Capra, wonderful ideas of, you know, we're going to spread liberty, whatever. I mean, this is the year 2020. We're, we're past this now. Okay. Oh, you know, wow. But Laura, but it, it seems to me, I mean, we have to remember on Obama's watch was the, the catastrophe in Libya. And I see the same kind of, I see Susan Rice uh, hovering around Joe Biden. I see Samantha Power hovering around. Actually, they both spoke at the, the RNC. Um, I mean, do you want, with people with resumes like that, should, would, you, would you be happy to see them in a Biden administration? Well, listen, I'm just, I'd like to play two-on-one -on -one basketball about some of the things that have been said here. Ultimately, you know, there, there is a binary being advanced by Lionel here, and it's that, that, that being involved, no good can come of it. You want to talk about Syria for a minute? Let's talk about Syria for a minute. The, 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 the complete absence of the U.S. President's presence leaves room for Russia and Turkey to gain a foothold in the Middle East. It creates instability in the Middle East, and it leaves a, a, a pathway to peace as, as a, a shimmer in the distance. Uh, so this is, it's absolutely ridiculous to say that there's no impact when you remove American troops. Now, is it an ideal situation? You don't hear me advocating for that. Again, nuance is important here, but I don't hear any of it over here. All okay. the while you decry this binary that doesn't exist. How, how is American presence in Syria bringing about peace? No, what it does is it doesn't allow the government to rebuild. Okay, I mean, I mean, the U.S. government continues to sanction Syria after the U.S. lost. It lost there, and its proxies Should, lost. Let the so you would see, so you, you would see an autocrat build, installed. You would see an autocrat ability. installed in every nation, and just allow the places, you know, foreign governments that are adversaries of the United States, Russia being one of them, uh, Turkey being one of them, <laughs> just taking over the power and 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 and, and us leaving, leaving a power vacuum power. everywhere. Why does the power Ukraine vacuums everywhere? That sounds great. No, it would actually make people sit down and talk instead of funding terrorist groups in the Middle East. You know, and, you know, it, it, Saudi Arabia is a close ally of the United States. When the United when Saudi Arabia is is exporting the most noxious ideology you can possibly conceive of. Let that me we have let been me on say the, one other on thing. Short end of okay. No. Let me say one other the region, thing. The region would have to figure it out here, okay? And, the, well, and, and I'm not that, against the military. I'm just saying, why is what is in the American interest to be in Afghanistan, in Syria, and Iraq, when the Iraqi government and people want us to leave? Haven't we helped the Iraqi people enough? All right, on this point, I have to go to a hard break. I'm, not, I'm trying not to be rude here. Um, but, uh, we a, when we return, we'll continue our discussion on forever war. Stay with our team. Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're discussing Forever Wars. Okay, Laura, you, you and I were having quite a heated discussion before we went to the break. I think I, do, I owe you uh, a time to reply. Go ahead. Peter, let me just say, I don't know where to start because we just keep tossing in countries, but, the, but ultimately we haven't also been talking countries. about the other, the, the other instruments that we're talking about here, which is the erosion of the diplomatic core, because this isn't entirely a military solution. This is an economic solution that needs to be fomented with the instrument of that solution being the diplomatic core. Um, you, you need to have diplomats engaging and you also need to have alliances. I mean, America's at its strongest when we have our allies moving forward, when we're at the center of these negotiations, when we're working to use our influence abroad Broad so that we can defend our economic interests and ultimately promote democracy because we know that liberal democracies don't fight with one another. They don't fight wars with one another. And that's a long... Oh my God. Listen, just let me finish one sentence, and that would be great. You didn't interrupt Lionel, but you, I'm sure you will at some point. But liberal democracies don't fight with one another, so we should be advancing peace. And that you, you may say that that's naive, but that should be the ultimate goal with these sort of moves. And but So you're not going to agree with me even on the diplomatic 
who have to in overthrow government so they'll be democratic. Okay, that that is no, a, I didn't say that. that. I didn't say that. War, I right? did not was, say right? anything like that. Lionel, go ahead, jump in. Can you imagine if we went back in time and took somebody who, let's say, died right around the Vietnam era, brought them back, listened to this conversation and asked them, which one do you think of those people talking right now? Is the Democrat, who's the Republican? You would say, well, this, this very, very well-spoken woman, I think, is she must be, she's a hardliner, she's a hawk. She's a Republican. What, when are, we, what are you talking about? We are using the same arguments we did in Vietnam. Yeah. We yeah. never learn about power vacuums. We have to go there. Let me explain to you one thing that you will never hear Joe no, Biden please. ever utter or speak through his wizened decrepitude. You will never hear the country China ever mention about anything. We will continue with the trope, the meme of Russia and this Russophobic and Kremlin baiting, because that has been the theme from the get-go. So the idea is simply this. The Democratic Party has sold out to whatever you want to call it, another conspiracy theory. By the way, it's a conspiracy fact of the people who have run this country forever. And that is, you want to call them the military-industrial complex, whatever. Joe Biden is a Manchurian candidate, a man who does not know where he is, a man who was basically chained to a radiator in a root cellar somewhere, who is going to be supplanted within two to three months. Kamala Harris, if they're successful, is going to be put in there. The ultimate Manchuria, Manchurian candidate who will make Hillary Clinton look like Ramsey Clark. Now, we can pretend all we want and we can use terms about going in and being strong. But this is about giving the checkbook to the people who have run this country. The Peter, you're not going to interrupt this at all? You're not going to interrupt me, but not him. Okay, can I? Well, you just did, so jump in. Listen, here's the thing. Uh, you, you can, I don't know how you don't describe that as a tinfoil hat. I don't understand how anybody, you know, we want to talk about China. Uh, Joe Biden has yeah. absolutely talked about China. So now he's mean? a Manchurian candidate that's going to be replaced by Kamala Harris. I mean, yeah. I, I would commission you, Lionel, to write novels that would, would keep me up at night and invigorated. Maybe we can get you a movie deal Look with that type of conspiracy the theory. Eye. But Look that has no eye. business, Look that has no business right in foreign right. policy. Look me in the eye and Look the camera in the eye and tell me that at no particular time to any of your fellow Democratic operatives has the subject of when is Kamala Harris going to replace Joe Biden? Tell me that has not been addressed. Tell Look me, me the in the president. eye and say anyone ever has not talked about the vice president's fitness to lead in the event of the president. We talked about it no, with no, every no, no, vice no, president no, since no, the dawn of time. No, so please no, give no. me another now, look me in the eye question. Being, you're not, you're, you're talking about tin foil oh. right now. You tell me that you honestly would bet any amount of money that Joe Biden could continue his term if elected? You are honestly saying that? You really believe that? Okay, we're, and going, I'm a ten okay, we're, going, we're going pretty far afield here, okay? I'm, I want to stay with the foreign policy part here. Um, Laura, what did you think of Obama's foreign policy? Because it looks like there's, it's going to be an echo of that in a, a, a potential Biden administration. So give us a scorecard for Obama. How long have you got? I mean, listen, I think it's complicated. Why don't we pick an area? If you could narrow your question, I'd happily answer it. Well, I, I, I think China. That's, but you already deflected I think it's, Libya. I think it's even. I, I, well, you know, look, is, was he perfect? Absolutely not. Do I think we need a wholesale rejection of use of diplomatic aims, use of economic investments, use of sanctions appropriately? Um, and, and you know, I don't think that he was a military interventionist. We, we didn't go to a broad scale. He with five and, and he left with seven. So, yeah, I think he was. No, but his attempt to try to remove troops where he could certainly happen. So I, I you know, this is, a, but I understand you have a completely different version of history and events than most no, people. No, so that's I probably why you have your own show. I didn't have so a coded version of it, okay? I, I, I said to you prior to this recording 
is that I'm equally hard on the Democrats and the Republicans, equally hard on Obama and on Donald Trump, because I'm more interested in non-intervention, and I'm very strongly anti-war. And I think a lot of missed opportunities uh, we have experienced here. And it, it happens under all administrations. And that's why I go back to what I said earlier, is that it doesn't really matter who's president, because you're going to have a permanent democracy. The Vinmans and the Fiona Hills and people like that, that say the interagency consensus. Well, I didn't vote for that, you didn't, and Lionel didn't, okay? And it seems to me, and I will agree with Lionel, maybe I, I don't I have the same kind of thesaurus delivery that Lionel does, but, you know, I'm a little worried about the guys, you know, as he got all his marbles, because I see these people surrounding him, and these people are bad people. They made bad foreign policy decisions, and they're still around. Okay, go ahead, Norm. I mean, listen, you, you want to demonize, you say that you're against Republicans and Democrats equally, but you only name the Obama administration. So it sounds like you've got I a bunch of the Obama, Obama administration. deal with Iran. The other thing I that I would say. Good deal. It was a good deal. It was a good diplomatic deal. And I fault the Obama administration for not taking that as a starting point to start stabilizing the Middle East. It was a great opportunity to do that. And I think Trump was a fool to walk away from it. So there, I gave you a good example. This and is by the way, like the Iran deal. And I President like Obama, and, and to, to, to I agree. Give kudos, and give kudos to President Obama, he was rather uh, reluctant to do what his military advisors told him and the Hawks regarding Syria. He could have done a lot more. So he wasn't completely all in. But let, let me just explain something. You suggested that we're going to abandon diplomatic negotiation, sanction, who, whoever. We're talking about military. Let me, let me, let me just get, be, be very basic. How do we explain to the world that we're in all of these bases all over the world? Now, I know this may be un-American to say this. And again, I can't believe I'm talking to a, to a Democrat about this. But what gives the United States the right to go in and say, we are going to tell country A whom they can speak with? We're making deals with Saudi Arabia. We have, we, our diplomatic schizophrenia is imperceptible to most people. How, does, how do we tell anybody else, you can't deal with this? And by the way, since we're so worried about the stability of the Middle East, did you hear, Peter, and did you hear, Laura, this, this notion of this, this cacophony of kudos that was directed towards the president regarding what's happening in the Middle East? Not a word. Nothing. It's just happening. Because it Let was a photo it. op. I mean, because it was a photo op. That's you not, I mean, it's, and you traded F-35s for the photo cannot, op, which is questionable at best. Now, but you've just, I, I, now, now you've just, you've just, you've just lost me oh, completely. That's oh, a photo Did I op. just lose you? Did I just lose you? No, no, I don't no, think no. I lost you a while cannot, ago. You cannot be serious. You cannot know. And, and honestly, come on, anybody can inform and say that that, was a photo op. Do I have to explain to you the history? Oh, I know you're you virulent. It sounds like you do. you're virulent you know so much more. The president. I know that you are. Hey, all right, hang on here. Uh, we're rapidly, we're rapidly running out of time here. But I mean, Laura, don't you see this kind of continue again, kind of being nonpartisan here? Um, this continue. We can go back to you know, uh, George Bush Senior all the way to the present. It, it doesn't. Re it, I, I'm very frustrated. You know. You know. There's plenty of data, uh, from particularly from the 2016 election, that people are very against these wars, these forever wars, and Trump talks about being against it. But you know what? He's president, and he's and he's not succeeding under his watch, okay? It tells me something, it either something is wrong with him, or most likely, or in addition to, is it the, the permanent bureaucracy? No, this is what we do for a living. You know, we have, the, uh, we have these arms producers, we have 5,000 bureaucrats in NATO that need to keep their careers, uh, very lucrative ones at that, and all these alliances, well, it's just really good for, for the arms producers. I mean, that's a, a logic that is irrefutable. It's just good business, but it's bad for security. Go ahead, Lauren. So, I, I just to, to, to position me as the hog is like quite frankly ridiculous. Well, Lionel did that. Yes, I mean, Lionel did yeah, it. But, <laughs> because and, you and are. That's why I brought. Oh, I, I apparently. So um, I just really do think that we can't oversimplify this, and I feel like this conversation has been completely oh, reductionist in that way, where we can't oversimplify it and say intervention or not intervention. That binary is. 
patently ridiculous. You so, are a master of oversimplification. You've used every oh. bumper sticker, echo chamber trope since you well, did. did. You have yeah, well, I, 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 because it's in response because because I'm responding no, to a question that says intervention or non-intervention. You can take out your thesaurus and beat me over the head with it, but it doesn't mean that you're sophisticated. That wasn't the issue. That's not what we I too can say cacophony, Lionel, and it you doesn't make the, me wrong have, or right. You have the wrong script for this argument. That's not what we're talking about. You oh. are talking about mm -hmm. something else. Well, you so, are creative. I will give you that. Uh, if not with, correct or, or fact-driven. I'm, I'm still reacting to fomenting peace. By God, we're going to deliver peace. If it kills them, we're <laughs> going to do it because that's what we do. That's America. I, I, I can't believe this. And by the way, okay, I, 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 I actually, that. this is the first time in 10 years I have no, uh, oh, no, uh, I have um, no idea how to end this program, but other than saying <laughs> thank you, Laura, and thank you, Lionel, for joining us here. And I want to thank our viewers for watching us here at RTC. And next time, remember, Crosstalk Rules.